Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's set the visibility for all of the pages um, as they should be. So the first one is the client's page. I'm just going to open up here and see what I've done in my app previously. So we want this page to only be visible if, I mean, you can do this a number of ways. You can say if the email is your email, or you can say if the role is admin. So if you're an admin, you can see this page. If you're not an admin, it's going to be invisible. So since we're viewing it as Matteo Mabello, we can't see it. But if we go to my profile, we can see it. And we do the same for requests. So we go to requests, we go visibility, and we only want to show this when the user profile role is admin. Now, even though this seems like a flimsy way of kind of hiding and showing pages, even if someone had access to this page, unless they are a row owner for everyone, they would only ever see their own data. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, so that's requests. It's just the same visibility. Um, then what we want to do is head to account and we want this page to be visible if the user profile role is not admin because as an admin you don't really need to see any of this any of these pages you want just a cleaner interface um you can always see it on the back end anyway so there's no need so what we want to do is then go to also results and we want to set the same visibility condition so we want to say when the role is not admin, right? Um, and then for the dashboard, we want to do the same. Now there's some ex extra things we're going to do in a moment. So let's set this role, ay ay ay. Role is not admin. So. However, we don't want to show any of these three pages until they've completed the onboarding because we kind of want to direct them and guide them on what to do. And we need certain information before they can actually start using the app properly. So we only want to show this page also when the user onboarding, okay, I'm just going to search for this. So user, uh, Onboarding step one is checked and onboarding step two is checked. So once both are checked, then this page will become visible. Now you can see now that Matteo has them unchecked, so he can't see this page. And we're just going to do this for the results. So we're going to say this page is visible when they're not an admin. And I'll just type it in, it's easier. When they're not an admin and both steps have been checked for onboarding. And we do the last one here. So when onboarding step one is checked and onboarding step two is checked. All right, so right now they're invisible but the welcome page is visible because we haven't set any rules. But we also want to, we also want to hide this welcome page when, um, when they've completed the onboarding because they don't need to see it. So what we're gonna do is only show this tab when the user pro, we can do that, we can do the same thing. We can say when the role is not admin, We also only want to show, show this page. Ay, ay, ay. This, this can get frustrating. Let's just say if the client ID is empty, we don't want it. Um, we want to show it if the client ID is empty because um, in fact, we don't need that step actually. 
I don't think we do. What we need to do here is just make sure that this is only showing when the onboarding step two is not checked. So I may have messed that up, but I believe that's how it should be. So since Mateo has only, um, uh, has not been onboarded yet, none of those two boxes are checked, all he can see is the home page and the profile page, right? You can never hide this from them. So all, they, all he can see is the profile page and the welcome page. And that's exactly what we want because once they have finished the onboarding, right? And we check these two boxes. Now you can see that he can see these three pages and nothing else. All right, makes sense to me. So let's get rid of this example person we added before and let's uncheck these boxes and let's build out this welcome page. So what we wanna do is add a bit of text. This is just gonna be a title. Um, in fact, we don't need a title. What we can do is just add some text headline and this is gonna be small and this is gonna say, Compelt, complete your profile. Headline small, excuse me. Um, then we're going to add a container. And in this container, we're going to make it a card. And we're going to add some text entry. So we're going to add the ability to add their name. We're going to add the ability to uh, well, that's all we need actually. In terms of text, what we will do is add their image so they can pick an image. So this is going in there. And we can call this, you know, profile photo. Then we're gonna add a button to this container as well. And this is just simply gonna say next step. Oi, 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 what's going on there? Next step. And all this is gonna do is set the first onboarding step as true. So when they click this, we don't need the secondary. All we're gonna do is set onboarding step one as true. So when I click it now, Mateo will have this checked, right? So we'll uncheck it for now. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna show the next container um, actually, which is going to be a form and this form is going to submit a new row to the clients column. So we go to form container and this form container is going to add a new row to the clients. We want the background of this container to be the card. And what we want to do is remove this. And what do I have as the text entry? Um, I believe I just called it business name. Yep. Yeah. So this is then going to be business name or client name. Business name. This is going to be required. They can upload their logo. That's going to be required as well. They can upload their website. That's going to be required and the brand summary is also going to be required. Then we're going to add one more thing, which is the file picker. And we're going to allow them, if they want, to upload some brand guidelines. So, um, and we can keep the file name when uploading. So I believe that's all we need for that particular one. And after submit, all we're going to do is go to a certain tab, set the columns, play a sound. Client ID is the row ID. Okay, so once they've clicked this, the plan ID is going to be the user profile invite plan ID. So that's the one that we a link to their user profile when we first sent them the invite. And then we're going to do, I'm just going to edit this action. So what we want to do is create a new action. And this is going to be the client 
uh, onboarding success. You can call it whatever, but basically once they've done that, we want to set some column values. So bear in mind that we are, this form is submitting a new row to the client's column. So what we want to do is um, not set the column values for this current page item, which is the user profile, uh, sorry, the, the client. We want to change the, we want to edit the user's profile, right? And we want to add the client ID of the form that was just submitted to their profile so it's linked. So I probably butchered that entire explanation. But what we want to do, sorry, we want to add, um, yeah, the user, we want to add the, uh, where is it? The row ID. Okay, now I'm confusing myself. Uh, the user profile. Yeah, just the client ID is going to be the row ID of the client item that we just submitted. Can be a little confusing. And then the only other thing, we're going to set the onboarding step two to true, right? So that's the column values. Then what we're going to do is go to a tab and we're going to go to the dashboard tab. And then we're going to play a sound because we want to celebrate the fact that they've logged in. So we can play what? We can play New Thought. How about that? And then we want to just show a notification to them. And we say account created. Woohoo! And then we save. And so. When someone first arrives, oh, this won't show it because, oh no, it might. Yeah, it will, sorry. Now, since Mateo has not completed those two steps, this is the only thing he can see. Um, now, the trouble with this is that because this is a form, it's not gathering his particular information. But if I was to click this, and submit then it would work but let's let's do it properly let's uh finish off the visibility so we only want to show this component when this step one is checked and we only want to show this component when step one is not checked so they've clicked the invite button they've clicked next step it's gone here when they click this submit, it's going to do all that magic and it's going to redirect them to the dashboard where they can create their account. So as far as I know, we are good to go. So the next little uh, section of this series is going to be a full run through of inviting a user, getting them to onboard themselves, getting them to place a request, approving that request, then uploading a draft, requesting feedback, getting their feedback, uh, advancing it to the finalizing stage, marking it as complete, getting their final feedback. And yeah, hopefully everything works. I think it's all good to go. That's all I can think of right now. So let's get on to that. <laughs> all right, we almost did it without errors, but there are a few things that are important that I want to fix up before we go through the whole use case scenario. So the first thing is that I forgot to do the email exists check on these um, additional emails that we created. So all we want to do is create this and make sure that the first value, which is the email exists, right? For each of them, because I actually just did a test run and it turned off the entire scenario because an email didn't exist. And you don't want that. You want it to continue to work. And then if, um, and have like systems that notify you what's going wrong. So. We can just say if the email exists and the email is always the first value here and we just want it to exist. And then we want just the last one, which we're going to say here, we're going to say, make sure the email exists before trying to send an email. So pretty straightforward. 
making sure it exists. So we click save. Now, this is good to go. There's two other little things that I wanna change. Um, and you may have picked up on it as we were doing it. So the first thing is on the welcome page, I forgot to send, uh, I forgot to specify myself as the admin when they're creating this account. So what we wanna do is after they submit, after they send that information to add a row to the client table, we wanna make sure that the admin for this particular user is you. Otherwise, when you're trying to send an email, it won't let you access the actual email itself. That's that safety row owner feature that we had. So we wanna make sure that we set our email or your email as the admin column. So we click save, that's the first thing. And the second little thing that I wanna make an edit on is in the requests page, I was accidentally specifying my first name and my email as a user clicking the button instead of the user and the user's name and the email associated with this project. So what I wanna do is go to those buttons and edit the action. And I wanna edit this, um, this, this webhook. And I wanna make sure that instead of what I had, the um, you know email of the user clicking the button on the first name, we wanna make sure that it's selected as the user email of the project, right, of this particular item. So in this case, it's good. And we just wanna check that these other ones, yep, that looks good. And we wanna check this mark as complete. Okay, so it looks like I've already made all the changes. So I just wanted to make sure, otherwise you'll be running into some errors. So now we can get into the full run through. So let's jump onto that now. If you enjoyed that video or you found it useful, then I highly suggest you subscribe and hit the bell icon because I have a ton of low code videos and tutorials in the pipeline for you. And if you like the idea of becoming a low code developer who can create anything their mind can imagine without code, head to lowcode.com and sign up for one of our online boot camps. See you next time.